What is that I hear? Listen carefully. I hear marching soldiers, stamping horses. I hear the sound of swords cutting deeply against each other. I hear chariots, chariots from the left, chariots from the right. I hear the sound of battle, a huge storm, thunder. I hear the sound of sweet singing, beautiful harmony. I hear the sound of a lamb, an innocent lamb. The beautiful, welcoming sound of a royal king. A strange sight is about to appear in a perfect universe. One that is going to end in shameful defeat and a resounding victory. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to heaven. Where have you been, Lucifer? And what in heavens are you dressed as? Oh, it's just a little something that I picked out for myself. Makes me stand out from the crowd, right? It sure does. You're sticking out like a sore thumb. They don't think that is necessarily a good thing. Anyway, God wants to see you. Am I in trouble? <laughs> Whatever. Let me go see for myself. Ladies and gentlemen, special guests and special friends, we're glad you've come to be with us to learn about God's story. My name is Gabriel, and have I got a lot to tell? So take a special trip with me, by through times and centuries. Marcus, for a meeting. Marcos Colla meeting, Colla meeting, Colla meeting, Marcos Colla meeting, 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 Colla Michael's call a meeting, call a meeting, call a meeting. What's it all about? What's it all about? Michael's call a meeting, call a meeting, call a meeting. What's it all about? What's it all about? Story half for is about baby Jesus. But before you start thinking shepherds and wise men, I need to tell you that this story is one you may have never heard of before. That's because we are going to step back in time. Time before shepherds and wise men. Before the manger. Even before my visit to Mary, we are going to step back all the way to when the angels found out about the birth of Jesus. After all, that's when this story really began. And we're here to find out. It's bad. How bad is it? Lucifer is finally presenting himself before God. After years of, years of inciting rebellion against him, this should be All angelic hosts are required at the throne room immediately for an important announcement. Come on, let's go. We don't want to miss this.
We need to find out whether everyone is represented. First, we have Michael. He's the archangel. He's already seated next to the great creator. Now, there's only one archangel in heaven. In case you haven't guessed, that means he's pretty important. In fact, next to God, he's the head honcho around here. Thank you all for coming here today. There is a very important announcement to be made. Next, we have Sarah. She's in charge of the seraphim. Splendid, Sarah. And you need to know who Cherry is. She's in charge of the chair and a real angel. Michael, we are so honored that you included us, considering all the circumstances. Of course you're included. I wanted all the angels here. And thank you for holding the fort for Lucifer. He has not done his job in a long time. My pleasure. Hmm. Next is good old Harold. He is in charge of the Herald Angels. Or should I say, the Herald Angels are in charge of Harold. <laughs> Harold, I'm glad your delegation could be here. Thank you, Michael. Why do you think he called us here? There's an important announcement to be made. But that's right. Glad to be here. <laughs> Last but not least, we have Lucifer, the son of the morning, and the first of the covering cherubs, the leader, the lead director and choir master of the Celestial Symphony Orchestra, a true maestro. Lucifer, where have you been? Oh, I have been patrolling the heavens, watching everything that has been going on. That's not your job. Your job is to stand in the presence of the great creator as the anointed cherub. You have abandoned your post. So what? I've been busy. Busy turning my children against me. <laughs> as if it's not your fault. <gasps> yeah, I said it. If you are just God, if your laws were just, then no one would turn against you. Watch it, Lucifer. God's laws are as sacred as himself. That's, a, that's about enough, Lucifer. Stand down, Lucifer. Your behavior is unacceptable. <laughs> and who died and made you king? <gasps> Michael is my only begotten son, existing with me before you were created, you will bow and offer him obeisance. Obey? Why should I give him such honor? Lucifer, you are most honored of angels, highest among all heavenly beings next to the God Triune. Now, it seems that your heart has been puffed up with pride, filled with envy. Your mind is corrupted. Now, understand this. You are a created being, but it seems that you've forgotten your place. I'm willing to let this slide and return you to your original position if you repent. So, what you're trying to say is, I can't be like you? Exactly. Okay then. So I can be better than you? Absolutely not. Have you seen this face? Here we go. Have you heard this voice? I am the one who gave it to you. I am literally the most beautiful and intelligent being anyone has ever seen or heard. 
Come to speak why? Every precious stone is my covering. This guy is gonna give me a headache. Come to think of it. I am music. Just say the word, Lord. I can put an end to this insolence. You think you're all that? You just wait and see. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above your star. I will sit on the mount of your congregation. I will rise to the heights of the clouds and I will be like you. I trouble. Can you shut down that music? We've got unfinished business here. I believe it is time for the announcement. Behold your king. No, 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 no. This is an invasion of my rights, our rights. Angels are intelligent beings. We should choose our own leader. I can give them a new and better government. In fact, I will give them freedom. But there can be no freedom without the law. I bet I can convince half of these angels to worship me. In and fact, now you've gone insane. In fact, I bet I can get all of them. I'd rather you didn't, but if you did, you'd get no more than a third. Let me see for myself. My fellow angels, all the sweet liberty that we have been enjoying has now come to an end. An unjust ruler has been appointed over us, and we are required to serve him blindly. No. I will not submit to this violation of my rights, <coughs> of our rights. Angels do not need any laws, and that is why I am volunteering myself as your new leader in my government. There will be each and every angel will do as he wills. <laughs> More power. In my government, there will be no right or wrong. my government, there'll be no one to tell us no. In my government, every angel will follow his heart and they will do as he wills. Evil angels, steam! This is madness, Lucifer. Tell angels, close your ears to Lucifer's deceptive reasoning. There is no turning back now. Join me. Serve me, share in my triumph, or face eternal defeat. Lucifer, you have gone too far. You are now Satan, adversary of God. There is no place for you in my kingdom. Huh? What's that with as you can see, a third of the angels are with me. So are you going to throw all of us out and create such a void in heaven? <laughs> you have sinned <laughs> against me. <laughs> and for that, you are banished. You wouldn't dare. I am ready to defend my place in heaven by force of might, strength against strength. So be it. Michael, finish this madness.
Masikitiko. How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you have been cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. Yet now you are brought down to the lowest depth of the pit. Do you now see where it all began? Sarah, maybe you and your crew can break it down for our younger audience. Most certainly. So way back when Satan was Lucifer, he wanted to be as powerful as God and take God's kingdom and his kids away from him. Ooh. But God was having none of it. God had no choice but to kick him and his full rotten crew out of heaven. Yay! And things in heaven have been fine ever since. Of course they have. But that wasn't the end of Lucifer. Ooh. He couldn't imagine just how miserable he was outside of heaven. But soon enough, he found things to keep himself busy. The arch rebel and those who had united with him invaded the perfect world God had created for Adam and Eve and tempted them to sin by eating from the forbidden tree. And since then, things on earth have gotten from good to bad to worse. But everybody knows that the devil is going to get it in the end. Yay! In the meantime, God had to find a way to be close to man again. Because things on earth were very bad, it was bad news. How bad was it? So bad that the thoughts of their minds were only wicked continually. They were violent, selfish, and proud. In fact, My fellow angels, we've got a problem. We got high trouble. High trouble. Emperor's looking up for number one. Me, myself, and I trouble. What's gonna become of all this? High trouble. High trouble. Nobody cares about his fellow men. Has 
not seen God face to face since creation. Oh yes, that is before there was an eye trouble. That's right. Don't you remember? Everything on earth was beautiful. Man felt so close to God. God would walk with Adam and Eve in the cool of the evening. There was no sin, no death, just peace and happiness. Aww. Then Satan ruined it all. Ooh. Well, many years have passed since Adam and Eve fell. Satan was successful in sowing the seed of rebellion on earth. Ooh. 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 But God had not given up on his children. He still loves them. Yay! Yay! And now, we have someone who was just checked into heaven, not an angel. Let's welcome the prophet Moses. He has, he has just been resurrected from the dead by Michael. He now joins us after leading the Israelites for 40 years. Welcome, Moses. It sure is a nice place up here. You don't know what I've been through down there on earth. Well, you can take a rest now, Moses. We were just talking about the eye trouble that the time took down there. Don't tell me about the eye trouble. What do you mean, Moses? I spent 40 years in the wilderness with those self-centered, stubborn wanderers. Yeah, I remember. As I recall, you and the children of Israel never did see eye to eye with God. Get it? <laughs> Get it? Eye to eye. <laughs> Very funny. But you are right. It was so bad. How bad was it? It was so bad that the Lord had to come down to earth just to get their attention. Oh, good, that's it. No. 
were perfect, but clearly man wasn't. You better believe it. After all the trouble that God went through, just to show man how to get close to him, they still went on and worshipped other gods. In fact, a few days later, they made themselves golden calf. A cow, they made a cow and worshipped it. They continued to take the name of the Lord in vain and making themselves graven images. Come down, Moses. Come down. Everyone knows how bad of a time you had. <sighs> but Moses, you're not going to believe this. It got worse. The people forgot about their king in heaven and asked God to make one of them a king. It was downhill from there. Wait a minute. Who are you? Oops, sorry. I haven't announced the presence of our latest arrival. Now, please, let's welcome Elijah. Perfect from Israel. Michael sent a chariot of fire to fetch him. He didn't even taste death. Wow, you didn't die? You did die? Well, I'm just glad to be here. But as I was saying, after the children of Israel got earthly kings, man, it was bad news for us prophets down there. How bad was it? It was so bad, I thought I was the only one in the whole world who bowed down to Baal. I actually gave up, and I wanted to die, but God showed me that he still had a plan. You see, that's the good news. Well, God has always had a plan. Seven thousand knees did not bow down to Baal. I guess God always has his people. And what is Michael up to now? Wonderful things, I'm sure. I don't know, Elijah, but you are always an optimist. Not always, but I am now because I have something to be optimistic about. And if all the angels will help me I would tell you all the things I and other prophets told my people in those years. Keep your chin up and know because God has a plan. Peace on earth, 
the one who tried to tell people how to get closer to God during your time? Well, there was Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, other major prophets. But they didn't listen to you either? Stubborn Lord. You don't have to be to, to remind me. Even though we were the major leaguers, we still stuck to. We got our trouble. But none of them succeeded. And things on earth had gotten very bad. How bad was it? Cut that out. As I was saying, things had gotten so bad that God decided to put it to action. The plan of the centuries. An announcement like this, demands a fanfare hell. to man again. We understand that, Gabriel, but does he actually have to go down to earth and live among them? Yeah. Why would he want to do that? Yeah. Why? Why, why, why would he leave a place where angels try to live where men? I just wanna, just wanna, just wanna know Why, why, why would he live a glorious by and by to live someplace that just so so I just wanna know, just wanna know, just wanna know I just wanna know, just wanna know, just wanna know, just wanna know why in heaven God would want to go I just wanna know, just wanna know, just wanna know. It's a question that 
wonder how it will go. Well, it's certain you can never predict anything that God has in mind. But it wouldn't hurt to try. Thank you. 
will be more honorable. Someone, come and take his autograph. Me, me, me. Look, it's my code. How is he going to go to that? What is he going to be? What will he go as? Will he be a wealthy king? Will he be a mighty warrior? Will he be a famous musician? No, no, no. Nothing like that. I'm going to go to Earth as a baby. A baby? A baby? There's nothing quite special about a baby. Yeah. Why would he want to go to Earth as a baby? He has a very good reason. Why don't you all just listen? Now, 
As you all know, since creation, there is something that the great creator and I have been trying to recover. And the only way that we can do it is if I go to Earth as a baby. someone important many people feel like they never approach him never be close to him well then our babies are wonderful idea michael what will your name be well gabriel you can tell them that's the best part his name will be jesus that means savior he'll be saving people from dying in their sins in that case, everyone will want to come to him. No, I'm afraid you're wrong. Not everyone will want to come to me. But why? Well, it's not eye trouble again. Some people have it so bad that they're blindfolded to the fact that being close to God is their best place to be. Is there any cure for them? There sure is. All they have to do is take their eyes off themselves and look to Jesus.
the best gift ever received. But for one other, he knew no peace. He knew this would mean defeat. We see the natural, Mary and Joseph, the manger, the wise men, and the shepherds, Herod. But do we understand the spiritual law at hand? For this was the beginning of Lucifer's misfortune here on earth. For this, this is why this day was chosen. Lucifer schemed, he whispered. He thought he could change what God had planned, what had been. But the devil should always know that God will always win.
King, he grew up to be a to be a he grew up as a carpenter's son and a teacher. His crew not only consisted of noblemen or princes, no fame or fortune to his name, as men would expect. But tonight now, as he lays in his mother's arms, he is the world's smallest shepherd. <laughs> Oh. 
up as a carpenter's son. He lived a perfect life, taught the truth, and performed miracles, proving he is God. For a moment, they seemed to acknowledge him as they shouted, Hosanna in the head. Hosanna in the highest. This powerful brings to all men. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. He of kings is the Lord. for a moment. He showed the full extent of God's love by taking the place and dying on the cross. And he was right. They will betray him when he stood before Pilate who wanted to set him free. The Jews were called upon to choose. They rejected the king of the world and chose Barabbas, a thief and a murderer. So he died, lonely and dead, just as he said he would. But three days later,
Samuel. In first and second Samuel, he was our trusted prophet. In Kings and Chronicles, he's our reigning king. In, in Ezra, he's our faithful scribe. In Nehemiah, he's the rebuilder of everything that is broken. In Esther, he's the Mordecai, sitting faithfully by the gates. In Job, he is my redeemer that liveth. In Psalms, He's my shepherd, I shall not want. In Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, he is our wisdom. In Songs of Solomon, he is the beautiful bridegroom. In, 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 in Isaiah, he's the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, and the prince of peace. In Jeremiah, he's the suffering servant. And in Lamentations, it is Jesus that is the weeping prophet. In Ezekiel, he's the wonderful four-faced man. In Daniel, he's the fourth man in the midst of a fiery furnace. In Hosea, he's my love and is ever faithful. In Joel, he baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. And in Amos, he is our burden bearer. In Obadiah, he's our savior. And in Jonah, he's the great missionary that takes the word of God into the world. Now we go on and we see that in Micah, he is the messenger with beautiful feet. In Nahum, he is the avenger, our just God. In Habakkuk, he's the watchman that is ever praying for revival. In Zephaniah, he is the Lord mighty to save. In Zechariah, in Haggai, he is the restorer of our lost heritage. In Zephaniah, in Zechariah, behold, your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey. In Malachi, he is the son of righteousness with healing. In 
in his wings. Oh, we are not done. In Matthew, thou art the Christ, the Son of God. In Mark, he is the miracle worker. In Luke, he is the Son of Man. And in John, he is the door by which every one of us must enter. Ah, in Acts, he is the shining light that appears to Saul on the road to Damascus. In Romans, he is our justifier. In 1 Corinthians, he is our resurrection. In 2 Corinthians, our sin bearer. Oh, in Galatians, he redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. In Ephesians, he is our unsearchable riches. In Philippians, he supplies our every need. In Colossians, he is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In First and Second Thessalonians, he is our soon coming king. In First Timothy, he is the only mediator between God and man. In Second Timothy, he frees us from our fear. In Titus, he is the blessed hope. And in Philemon, he is the friend that sticks closer than a brother. Ah, I'm not done. In Hebrews, he is the blood of the everlasting covenant. And in James, it is the Lord that heals in first and second Peter he is the chief shepherd in first second and third John oh, he is our advocate with the father it is Jesus that has the tenderness of love he is our truth in Jude he is the Lord coming with ten thousand saints and in revelation lift up your heads church behold your king is coming he is the king of kings and lord of lords behold your king Church race.
And that marks the end of Gloria's choral concert, the year 2022. We will, amen. <laughs> Behold your king. We will now want to invite, huh? we want to invite Elder for a vote of thanks. But before that, we are lifting an offering towards um, the deep sea mission, which is starting from tomorrow. So even as Elder do this, deacons, you kindly help us with the lifting of the offering. Elder, please. Elder. the title the offering session we are going to sing the same song all hail the power of jesus name
thank you, thank you. I, we, we've come to the end of today's uh, concert done by the glorious choral. And first, it's just to thank our God for this opportunity he's given us today to glorify his name through this concert. And uh, as we thank our God for this opportunity and the nice afternoon we've had, we wish to really thank the teachers who have done a lot of work with the children to make this happen. Thank you, teachers, and thank you, the volunteers. You've done a great work. Thank you very much. And the parents for the children, thank you very much because this practice has gone on for over two, almost two weeks. So the parents were very committed in terms of bringing the children in time for the practice, picking them up in the evening, practicing with the children at home. Thank you very much for molding the children to be what God wants them to be. Please keep it up even as we continue serving our good God. Thank you, parents, very much. The church leadership, pastor, thank you for the support and continue supporting the children. Yeah, thank you. And we believe even as we go into the new year, the support will continue and our children will continue serving our God. So we come to the end. Continue supporting us, please, and uh, let's mold the children into what God wants them to be. Uh, we'll close with a word of prayer, and uh, since the senior pastor is here, and this is the last concert being done by the children, I'll invite the senior pastor to offer a closing prayer. As the pastor comes, please continue praying for the children. We start an evangelistic campaign tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll do the setup, so the real campaign starts on Monday, and we'll be doing this at the deep sea throughout the week, and we'll culminate the evangelistic campaign next Sabbath at the deep sea. So continue praying for the children as they go into this mission, and support them. If you have time, please come and join us at the deep sea. We'll be starting in the morning at 8 up to 4.30. Come and join us for that mission, and on Sabbath, if you have time, please make an appointment to come and close the evangelistic campaign with us at the deep sea. Otherwise, thank you and God bless you. Pastor Nyaga, please close with the word of prayer. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. And all the time, I sat there from the start of this program and um, to some point I was almost breaking emotionally when I reflected on the entire plan of redemption. I've been born Adventist, brought up as a, in church, involved in children programs, grew to become a pastor, read so many books of Ellen G. White and God through theological trainings to master's level, but I want to confess today that the reading of the Word of God within the context of the plan of redemption and great controversy never came so vividly in simple way that it has come today. I want to glorify the Lord. Uh, the children ministry, the brain behind all these good things, may the Lord bless you. Our children, you have done it wonderfully for the Lord. You, you, you just beautiful angels. <sighs> it is good. I'm, I'm seeing my daughter here. She has been coming every day for practice. I never knew what they were doing. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. Uh, this morning as we woke uh, preparing to come, she would tell me the, the titles for the songs they're going to do. She would try to, you know, illustrate. At uh, times she would tell me we would do this way. Then I, but I couldn't connect what she was telling me until I sat here this afternoon and I saw this performance. Uh, you guys, may the Lord bless you so much. I, I, if I knew this is what you planned, we, have, we would have taken you out there in Urpak. 
and invited the entire city to come and see this powerful message on the plan of redemption. I pray that those of us who are able to be blessed by this message, those who follow through our um, social um, platforms, that the Lord may indeed elevate our spirits. I also want to encourage us, uh, those of us who are connected in our platform, please share this afternoon program like you have never shared before. Let it go far and wide for the people to see. I loved especially the conversation in heaven <laughs> between God and Lucifer. And, <laughs> you know, I was trying to imagine, this is how it, it, it was because there was a conversation, you know, it's only Revelation that tells us there was controversy, but as to the manner of the controversy, the issues there, the discussion there, the people that didn't tell us and think the leaders trying to imagine what was happening in heaven at that particular time, and that came out so very well. Unfortunately, uh, before we leave, I'm going to call elders to come and uh, have special prayers for my seat because the devil sat there. <laughs> so, so we have to do special prayers of cleansing the pastor's seat because uh, Lucifer, I saw him after he became Satan, he went and sat there. <laughs> and I'm very uncomfortable with that one on a light note. Anyway, guys, thank you. Thank you so very much for this program. We can't wait to have another program like this one. I want to invite us for prayer as we end this meeting. There's all rise for prayer. Children, let us rise for prayer. Well done, well done. Thank you so very much. God bless you. After this, I, I think I'll, I'll request Victor, just take me a photo with these angels after the prayer. Thank you. Our gracious Father in heaven, the story of redemption, bringing out the difficult experience you've had with the fall of man into sin. The mystery of iniquity. How the best of all creatures in heaven were found to have a spirit and a mind that has caused sin. The rebellion, the controversy, and your wonderful, everlasting love that gave birth to the plan of redemption, that there was no any other way for us today to be saved. There was no any other means to remove the problem of sin than you, God, to become like one of us, die on the cross a shameful death, be lowered into a grave, and then resurrect as a means of giving us eternal life. How beautiful this message today has come to us. Not through a great exposition by a great preacher, but so powerfully from the voices and the hearts of our very young children. Lord, may you help us today, each one of us, to reflect through this powerful message that we may not take this salvation for granted. It's been an expensive venture for you, it is too expensive. They have reminded us through the problem of I. They have sung songs on the problem of I. And indeed, this is the greatest problem and maybe the last to be conquered. We are still, even so many years after Jesus dying on the cross for us, we are still living this life so self-centered. Lord, how I pray 
that you will cause a revival in our hearts just because of this powerful message of our children. That we shall lift our eyes unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Focusing our faith there. Knowing for sure that he who began a good work in us will bring it to completion to his glory. That we shall say with Paul, I count all those things which I valued before I met Jesus not useless for the interest of having him and him crucified. May the reality of this salvation be our experience. Lord, help us. As the trumpet is going to sound and the eyes shall see Jesus, we too, together with our children, will get an opportunity to be in eternal life. Bless these young people. Make them great evangelists. Make them mighty men and women to win souls. Transform the experience into a disciple-making reality. That they will be used of you in the days they have. And invite many together with themselves for eternity. Bless the children ministry department, the leadership, and everyone who has spent themselves, their resources, their time in organizing this great script. Bless them, my Father, and give them more opportunities to continue serving you as they prepare many for thy soon coming. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let everyone say amen. Amen. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you.